in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of power, rest on me. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, But surely I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord full of power man of god full of power businessman full of power and then you will see yourself manifesting dimensions that no force in ghana it doesn't matter how long it was there you will scatter it and give way as if the devil does not exist preacher pay the price let the power of the holy ghost rest upon you and you will see that there is no limit to your rising do you believe what I'm telling you? The power of the Spirit. T.L. Osborne went to India and he went to preach. When he was done preaching, powerless preaching, he made an altar call and nobody came. They almost chased him out of that place. And he was angry in the Spirit. And he said he went back and said, God, what is the meaning of this? And God told him, your message is correct but it was not backed up with power and the bible says he i mean that history tells us that he paid the price and when genuine power landed on his head he went back to india again and when he was preaching people were looking at him and he said where is the blind come where is this come he called certain people and miracles began to erupt there and the people started to shout one sermon that power preaches is greater than a thousand words i hope you know that the power of god is also an evangelist and there is a sermon it can preach there is an audience that only hears the sermon of power i vowed before god as a man of god that i will never travel to any land and any nation just to go and deliver a nice lecture and return back it's my covenant with God that I will never step my feet upon a nation and then at the end of it they just say wow this nice preacher came return back in peace God bless you no our assignment is to shift climates that when you step into territories Elijah was a man of like passion Elijah did not announce in a radio station that rain will not come from one position he said there shall be no rain over a space of three and a half years that when you are full of power when you land in a territory the territorial forces acknowledge ah jesus i know paul i know joshua selman i know you can add your name to the list in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down let me give you one more and then we're done wisdom wisdom power by the spirit please hold two people now that will start running 
so they don't injure themselves whether you're an usher or not just hold them and you can bring them and keep them i just saw this in a vision the power of god is coming on two people and they will start running literally please hold them so they don't injure themselves let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me the power to prosper rest on me let me give you the last manifestation of glory jeremiah 9 24 23 now we're dealing with 23 let not the wise man glory in wisdom so men glory in wisdom let not the strong or mighty man glory in might so there is glory in might and then number three let not the rich man glory in riches the third expression of the glory of god in the life of a man is wealth i hope you believe that god prospers men let me settle that first so that i don't waste my time do you believe it do not allow anybody no matter how well intentioned preach you into believing that being financially prosperous is not the will of god what god hates is carnality and an exaltation of material resources above and beyond your relationship with god and you don't need to have money to be in that state there are many poor people who are materialistic it's just that it's not yet been manifested because the resources to do it is not there are we together now please hear me ladies and gentlemen when i teach on the power to prosper and i teach on wealth and riches it's not from a carnal standpoint just a desire to have money to make it we are too serious with god for that kind of mundane business but the whole counsel of god must be taught his body if you must arise and become a living manifestation of the glory of god our world today is economically driven and one of the ways men become slaves is by becoming borrowers and becoming under the grip of financial issues are we together now proverbs chapter 22 please give it to us i think verse 2 proverbs 22 the rich and the poor they meet together where on earth the bible says the lord is the maker of them all what kind of a statement is this the bible would have just said men meet together what kind of a description is this why does the bible go so far to separate them to say the rich and the poor meet together then he strangely says the lord is the maker of them all the bible never says the lord made them so he says the lord made them all they transited themselves some to become rich some to become poor god made men some of the men decided to be prosperous and others decided not to be are we together whether you are abraham or lazarus is god that made all of them but their realities were different the bible says god is the maker of them all not the maker of them so go to verse 7 very very interesting scripture then he says the rich among all the ones that god made this is what makes leaders and this is what makes slaves the rich rule it over the poor and he says the borrower will remain servant to the lender so one of the ways to become a servant is to be a borrower africa are you hearing me a servant as a borrower the subject of the blessing of the lord 
the subject of financial prosperity, the subject of wealth and abundance has been faced within the body of Christ with many reactions. For others, sincere and well-intentioned, they have frowned so sadly at the subject of wealth and abundance. There are people and circles within the body of Christ that do not even want to hear the word rich or wealthy or abundant. And for some, I understand what they are trying to say because of the various abuses and the magnification of wealth above God. And, and that is correct. But then on the other side, we have people who have exalted money and like the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, they have built a monument behind their pulpit that is all about money, money, money. Both approaches to the subject of wealth are wrong. Are we together? The Bible lets us know, listen carefully, that the whole idea of wealth was not man's invention. It was not Satan's invention. It was God by himself. And the reason is because most people do not understand the purpose of wealth. And Dr. Miles of late says, when the purpose of a thing is not known, he says abuse of it is inevitable. Most people do not understand the purpose of wealth. And this is the reason why for others, it has become their unbecoming. There is such a description in the Bible as a rich fool. What makes the man foolish is not money. What makes a man foolish is money without purpose. Placing his soul and his trust. He built bigger bands and said, my soul, find rest. I have learned as a man of God that one of the greatest ways to remain a person of integrity is to be blessed financially. If you are not blessed financially, eventually the realities of your work or ministry will catch up with you and you are closer to the corridors of compromise if you are not financially blessed. It is the truth. Are we together? If I've landed in this wonderful church and I'm hungry and God gives me the ability to see your account number, what do you think I'm going to do? Come on, talk to me intelligent people. If I'm hungry and I can see your account number and I see there that there is a million dollars, chances are excellent I will say what God did not say. I will abuse the gift of prophecy because of hunger. Integrity has a maintenance system. One of it is wealth. The presence of wealth helps you to maintain integrity. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are three reasons according to scripture why God prospers believers. Number one, so that they can live a comfortable life. God is not against men living a life of dignity, decency, and comfort whilst we serve him. Number two, the second reason why God blesses believers in the kingdom is so that we can together provide financial resources for kingdom advance. This is a major reason. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is only so much you can do with money as a person. Wealthy people, and this has been statistically proven, that there is an amount of money that you get after which it cannot change you again. Hallelujah. Yes. There is an amount of money where all your needs are met and all your financial fears are gone. Money will stop blessing you from that point. The only other reason why you need more is because of the kingdom. Now, unbelievers have this orientation with all due respect, especially the Islamic world. They know this. It's an orientation that the children receive from birth. It's part of the orientation that financial resources are provided so that the program of God will happen unhindered, will advance without hindrance. You may have heard me say that the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it high for the nations to see. When Jesus was about to resurrect, when he resurrected, the Bible says that a group of people took the report and said, we saw it. We saw the tomb, the stone rolled away. And the Bible said they were given a large sum of money. That large sum of money, they said, keep quiet. Go and say, that they came and took him 
and if there is anything we have the influence to sort it out till today satan is still paying men to say jesus is not lord are we together i made up my mind as a man of god and as a leader that i will never raise a people who will only be spiritually vibrant their spiritual vibrancy is my priority but in addition to their spiritual vibrancy i must raise a people who are people of influence people of power and people of resources yes sir unapologetically so hallelujah genesis 17 and verse 6 the bible says and i will make you exceeding fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee one of my consecrations with god in ministry is that i will never do ministry for money and i will never manipulate anybody for material gain but to defend that consecration you must be comfortable and your house must be in peace i will never lead the people who are shouting amen and cannot pay the fees of their children who are shouting amen and their lives are going down and they are they are dying of high blood pressure dying of and especially if they are bringing seeds to you the man of god to say i bless you i i consider it fraud if people are sowing into my life and blessing me and i don't teach them the way to rise it's true are we together the reason why many wealthy people around nations and in church are so arrogant is because there are only few of them and because they are so needed they are almost worshipped by the time there are so many wealthy people everybody will know it's a privilege to give to god but by the time there are just two or three you will be forced to bow down and say oh and then they call the shots no way the body of jesus is hanging on a tree ladies and gentlemen and he took a wealthy man called Joseph of Arimathea to use his wealth and influence. That virgin tomb that Jesus was laid in, wherein the statement, Oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? It was a wealthy man's donation that led to the validity of that statement. Wealth played a role in the resurrection. Don't ignore it. Hallelujah. This year, God granted us the privilege and gave us an instruction to go and hold a Sound of Revival conference in the United Kingdom. And I, I say this to the glory of God, not with any sense of pride. I'm just saying it to encourage someone as I speak over your life. And God told me something, and now there's nothing wrong with giving. God told me there was a narrative that the church in Europe has had about all the, the you know the citizens in europe europe has a negative mentality about church as if all they do is to come and collect money and manipulate people and the lord said for that conference i will honor you but do not make one single collection no talk of money for all the days now how do you raise a budget i don't i mean you are intelligent people you use your mind and imagine what it takes the largest indoor theater in the entire united kingdom packed full with people over 2000 plus workers and to feed them and then come and preach and leave <laughs> hallelujah lack of finances has made many preachers angry when they stand on stage you are wondering where the anger of this preacher is coming from what did we do wrong there are all kinds of bills while he's preaching the creditors are texting and saying listen we are watching you too finish and come and meet us come on now that does not sound like the god that we serve there are some of you here right now you probably are men of god in ministry and you are almost at the verge of beginning to tell lies in prophecy or to go and collect some power somewhere because you have been told that you must make ends meet and we should not shy away from this in church 
shying away from the teaching about wealth and prosperity is not how it works it is teaching it right correcting the excesses by the time everything becomes about money 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 at the detriment of the cross at the detriment of transformation at the detriment of integrity now there is a problem but within the limit of righteousness within the limit of truth and integrity the whole counsel of God that includes his desire and his ability to bless and lift the saints must be taught are we together I have had the honor of praying and crying with many preachers especially across the African soil and they would come and say apostle this finance thing this is the only thing tying my ministry down how many books are locked up in the spirit of many people now that we need these books are ladders to revival how many of you have songs today that the nations need to hear these are the songs we are supposed to be praying with in the morning but we cannot hear them because you are incapacitated the ability to do a thorough work in the studio the song is there it has come from heaven but the means to make it reach us is not there how many people have been given certain insights by the spirit that can be captured in books and can mentor the generation rising so that they do not walk in error but they are limited financially hear me ladies and gentlemen every time you see israel going to egypt there is one major reason hunger genesis 42 1 and 2 we're about to wrap up now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt jacob said unto his sons why do ye look upon one another he said behold i have heard that there is corn in egypt i have heard that there is corn the problem is the location it's not in a place God's people should go. But that is the only place where there is corn. And Jacob himself as a prophet, he said, get down Tether and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. That's how the nation of Israel went to Egypt until they became slaves. Every time Satan sees God's people worshiping, some of you are in this place right now. And even though you are looking at me, the truth is you are not listening to me there is another voice you are hearing is the voice of pain is the voice of lack yes today is holiday but how about next Monday my children need to go to school this is what has corrupted politicians within the African soil this is what has corrupted men of God within the African soil this is what has corrupted civil servants within the African soil. This is what has corrupted businessmen within the African soil. Integrity is something that is so far within the African soil today. And it is because of lack of resources. There are preachers today who want to be righteous. They want to stand in truth. But how about their wives? How about their children? When a man of God's wife looks at him and says, Honey, I don't know whether God called you or not again. Because this economic situation, you need to go back and ask God. You will see the man walking around in the night, you will think he's praying. He's not praying. Look at people getting depressed, including preachers. Depressed. They can preach powerfully, but when they get back home, the man is emaciating and you're wondering what is wrong. God, how will I come out of this? You called me. Is it a cause that I answered the call? To the point right now that if you tell a young lady, I want to marry a preacher, a father will look at you and, so, and tell the daughter, so this is how you want to reward me for raising you up. Because it's almost as if it is a call to death, as if it's martyrdom. May a generation rise that will rewrite that narrative. <laughs> Are we together? I look forward to men who will rise from Action Chapel from Ghana. Who, listen, your assignment, because of the blessing of the Lord, you will write a list of ministries. One million dollars to this one. Five hundred thousand to this one. Three hundred. I hear that, um, I hear that there is a crusade 
about to happen in Kumasi. But I hear that instead of praying for souls, the people are praying for money. Hey, stop that prayer. Focus on souls. And you write it off. I'm not just entertaining you. In the name of Jesus, may God find a worthy vessel. A real financial apostle that will rise from here. Hallelujah. I prayed that prayer even for myself. I said, Lord, please get me to a point where I will be so empowered with the dignity of kingdom integrity that you will be able to raise other people. You will see a young man with such gift of God in his life about to start ministry and in pain. And you will say, I pay the rent for where you are using for the next three years to ease that burden. Now you focus on prayer and doing ministry with integrity. Are we together? There are many of you who are in business here. At the end of this, I'm about to speak over you. It's important to understand so that we don't just say amen. God is counting on the church in Ghana, the church in Nigeria, the church in America. It is expensive to win the lost. Lack of finances will make good people become dubious because they have to make ends meet. Some of you right now, you are owing corporately, you are owing personally. And if God does not show you mercy, when COVID struck, do you know that there are many men of God who died of depression after COVID? Yes. Because now there was lockdown for over three months. No offerings coming, no nothing coming. And then when COVID was done, many people backslided a kilometers away from the cross. And now the labor to bring them. There were people who literally packed up. They closed the door by themselves and said, I'm tired of ministry. I'd rather go back and sit down. I vow that it is not in my lifetime that a man of God will leave the work of the kingdom because of economic reasons. And don't just be quick to judge and say, did he have to do that? By the time your children do not eat, by the time your wife, your family, things are happening and then when sickness now strikes and they tell you they need ten thousand dollars to fly this man of god's wife say to america to treat her and the man does not have the money how do you stand on stage and say god is faithful oh receive you think the members are stupid will they say amen when it could not be demonstrated in your own life It takes wealth to finance God's program. I don't know how much it may have cost to put this together. But any intelligent person can only imagine. I'm involved in a lot of conferences, a lot of crusades. There are many more we are planning for next year. I know what it takes to run one service in our ministry. With all humility, it is what many people may use for conferences. One service. And you have to remain a person of integrity. One service. You cannot do ministry running tens of thousands of people if you do not have financial resources. There is a mother now who is watching me and crying. There is a preacher who is not here but is watching online and say, Apostle, you are speaking about me. I'm about to give up in ministry because I've done everything I know to do. Now someone has told me, come, let's go somewhere. There is one man who can rub something in your eyes. Then your eyes will now open and you begin to see. And you can become a millionaire in one year. That person is about to take that decision. But hear me, the God of heaven still prospers. The God of heaven still prospers. My life is a testimony that God is still called Ebenezer. He is the helper of men. One of my consecrations in ministry is that I will never manipulate people for financial gain. Never. I'd rather be called a failure in ministry than to go back home lying on my bed knowing I deceived God people, God's people. Either by not teaching them or teaching them lies or manipulating them for my gain. No. I fear God too much and I serve him too much. I have met him. There are certain encounters when you've had with God. There are certain things that die immediately. But please hear me. 
I want to speak to a businessman. I'm wrapping up. Listen to me. There are three levels of wealth. And by the grace of God and with every sense of humility, the man you see is not only a preacher. I'm not financially illiterate. I know something a bit about money. And I want you to please listen. God gave us a coat of many colors. You have only seen one color, but there are many other colors. What Jacob gave Joseph is what God gave some of us. Why he did that, I do not know. But he gave us the honor of wearing a coat of many colors. And one of those colors is how to prosper. I know what people do to prosper. Please listen to me. By the grace of God, I have met billionaires in dollars, multi-millionaires, both in the world and in the church. I've had the honor of gleaning from the minds of very intelligent, sincere people trying to unravel the secret behind this cancer that is plaguing the body of Christ. And I've come to a safe conclusion that at a very elementary level, I'm going to say two things that, please, I don't want you to forget. The first thing I want to say about wealth that I want you to remember is there are two dimensions to prospering in the kingdom. Number one is the Abrahamic dimension. Number two is the Lot dimension. Please listen. When God calls Abraham, he calls Abraham not for his sake alone. He calls Abraham for the sake of everybody who will be connected to him. The covenant is with Abraham, but the blessings must go beyond Abraham. So the Bible says God calls Abraham, Genesis 12, 1, 2, and 3. He ends his proposition to Abraham by saying, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 3. Then Abraham set out to leave. And the Bible makes a very interesting statement, I think in verse 4 or 5. It says, And Lot went with him. Listen carefully. And Lot went with him. God did not call Lot. Lot was not part of it. But Lot heard that there was a man the hand of God was upon. And he said, I will follow. Give us Genesis 13 from verse 1. 13. And Abraham went up out of Egypt. And he and his wife and all that they had. And Lot also went with him. Lot is still following. Verse 2. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Verse 3. The Bible says, And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, to a place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Uh -huh. Unto the place of the altar. Verse 5. The Bible says, And Lot also, look at how the Bible describes it, which went with Abraham, had flocks, and hurts and tents. What did Lot do? Nothing. He simply followed a man that God placed something on. So listen, when it has to do with being wealthy in life and destiny, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but I need to tell you this. Not everybody will be Abraham. You can look onto Abraham, but you may not have the privilege to be the one to pioneer the business. You may not have the privilege to be the one to pioneer the ministry. The moment you find out you are not Abraham, be Lot. At least the initial stages of Lot. Lot forgot that the reason why he was blessed was not because of his personal transformation and creativity. He was simply enjoying the grace of a man that God has spoken to. When Lot separated from Abraham, everything Lot had, he separated together with what he had. And Lot went down until he found himself in Sodom. Most believers want to be Abraham by themselves. So everybody is waiting to be the one to receive the business idea. 
everyone is waiting to be the one to head the conglomerate it will not always happen that way in the world of business there are abrahams and there are lots the most important thing is that both of them ended up prospering you would not even know who god spoke to and who followed because they all had so much that their men began to argue for space there are people today who have been given the unique privilege to start up businesses to start up great conglomerates there are others who do not have the pioneering spirit but they have the grace to support and make things work and so that you will be comfortable and not think until i pioneer it means god is not with me it is a cancer that is destroying africans so there are thousands of businesses being started every day and those who don't have that grace still keep flogging it out because they have been told the way to prosper the easiest way to prosper is to find somebody rising and to be part of their story relational prosperity is amazing you can step into prepared blessings by investing the gift of relationships but now the second aspect of what i want to talk about is that there are three levels of wealth and with this i speak over your life i hope god has helped us today the first level of wealth is called transactional wealth please write it down transactional wealth this is wealth and financial resources that come to you by reason of building and transacting your value whether as products or services every time you exchange value at a cost through whatever platform what comes to you the rewards both monetary and psychic is called transactional wealth it is the rewards that you receive for exchanging value when your value is converted to products and services and served to a targeted consumer base with excellence it is called transactional wealth number two the second level of wealth is called transformational wealth that one you don't sell your value you give it free an example is what i am doing however in god's justice system he designed a system such that every time value is dispensed whether it is sold for a cost or it is given freely a reward system must return back to the giver so the bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive because every time you give there is a divine debt in the spirit and the rewarder which is one name god is called it is the reason why i don't feel stupid for going to research pay the price some of this knowledge that we give the body of christ free were paid for i have had the honor and the privilege of speaking earlier this year i was in your nation to speak at the world conference of the full gospel businessmen's fellowship was an honor and a great time talking to some of the brightest minds leaders of conglomerates across the globe some of this knowledge is not just from scripture some of this knowledge have come from paid intellectual investments so why do you give it freely because there is a dimension one because of love but then number two there is a dimension of wealth called transformational wealth the reward that is programmed to your life by reason of freely improving lives and seeing to it that men evolve men become that looks like you are being cheapened but it is very powerful because you see let me tell you something if i am selling if i sell this for i, I don't know how your currency works here my apologies but let me use a dollar so if this goes for say a dollar even if i am a billionaire i will not buy this for a million dollars just because i have money the cost is fixed so i will pay you a dollar for it but if i bless you and you are coming to tell me thank you 
what you will give me will be a product of your perception of my value so one person can give me a hundred dollars and another person can give me a million dollars for the same content it is left to their perception for someone you will say you change the life of my husband my wife my family i want to say thank you this is the second dimension to wealth the third dimension to wealth which is privy only to men who are spiritual is called wealth by the prophetic wealth i would like to call it sovereign wealth wealth that is beyond the economy of men my goodness if you don't believe such exists then it means you do not know god that is the by this time tomorrow order of wealth now listen just teaching people to just shout and receive as the way to prosper them is not complete you have to grow people through these ranks you see that now transformational wealth helps people to build value build relationships products and services then you let them know it is not always about selling value there are times that you give freely knowing that he that gives to the poor lends to the lord but there is a level listen to me as i wrap up this level of wealth was demonstrated in john chapter 21 john peter goes back to the sea watch this now and peter is ready to catch fish i hope you know peter was a professional fisherman so there was no problem in terms of value peter had a good boat the tools were there peter had a net the net was there but he did not catch fish there are times where everything is right all the economic parameters are right yet it will still not work at that point you switch from being a businessman and what controls your wealth at that level is priesthood every time there was famine in the bible there were two groups of people who were exempted the king and the priest they never suffered famine and the bible now says in today you are both kings and priests revelations 5 and verse 10 that means by reason of your call and your mandate there is an immunity as a king and by the advantage of priesthood is someone learning now yes god sent prophets to people now unfortunately the prophetic has been abused so badly across the african continent and thank god that god is helping to bring purification to the prophetic it's an uncomfortable truth but we have to admit it that the prophetic has suffered a lot of abuses across several um you know it's not a call to condemn the prophetic but to lovingly call them to order and purity and consecration sanctification that we must restore the authentic patterns of the prophetic but watch this when the prophetic is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture and with purity of spirit it works wonders your jesus needed three prophets in his life to rise number one simeon the prophet number two anna the prophetess number three john the baptist three The prophetic advantage to the believer is not a nuisance to civilization. Do not let people intellectualize wealth and tell you there are unbelievers who don't know God and they are prospering. It is true. It depends on your definition of prosperity. Some of those people have money but they have no peace. They have to take drugs to sleep. They have all kinds of names depending on what nation they are. They are John here and Elijah there and James here. They live a false life forever. They are part of devilish fraternities. They feed on all kinds of disdainful things to live. Satanic occultic rituals. And then they dress well and you admire them on TV. The Bible says, mark the wicked. Their end is destruction. It is only the Lord God of heaven i've had the honor and i tell you this with all humility i've had the privilege of talking to very blessed people 
you do not know that there are some problems that only come when you are wealthy most people think when you are wealthy you have no problem there are problems that will make you hate being blessed especially if it was not by god it is the reason why the bible says the blessing of the lord maketh rich and added no sorrow some of these wealthy people that we admire they write books on happiness but they live lonely purposeless lives they are always in the face of media they, they are not happy always suicidal they contract to the millions of dollars all kinds of therapies to still keep their minds together so that they keep giving a narrative to the world that they are all right i can tell you the prince of peace is the only one who can give men peace in my world the greatest definition of prosperity is not money is peace no matter what you have if you do not have peace that surpasses all understanding you are poor so ladies and gentlemen the prophetic advantage was designed by God to become an edge not to replace people's sense of value not to make people careless and nonchalant but to become a support system to their rising I am a product of prophecy today I know what the contribution of the prophetic has done to my life both as a man of God and as an individual the day you meet the prophet sent to you you will marvel and wonder at the way God will lift you and things the Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath it says to none was Elijah sent I believe that God orchestrated this session this morning because there is a prophetic word that is leaving the throne and passing through the lips of clay to rest upon the destiny of someone that God by it will rewrite the narratives of your life listen every time people were in debt in the Bible it was not business that brought them out of debt it was the prophetic whether it was the axe head that floated alas master it was borrowed it took the prophetic or the land of samaria women eating their children can you imagine that a woman boils their child and eats the child in spite of the motherly compassion how about the wife of the sons of the prophet they came to carry the children as collateral and the woman came to the prophet and said please do not let this happen to the destiny of my children and the prophet says, all right, there's something we can do about it. What do you have in your house? And she says, nothing. No man was even ready to attend to her. And he says, now I speak to you. Go and borrow vessels. That go and borrow vessel was not a suggestion. It was a prophetic word. Nobody would have given her vessels if he did not prophesy it. If she had the ability to have vessels, she would not meet him in the first place. Go and borrow vessels means I speak that the helpers schedule themselves around your life. And he said, borrow not a few. When she borrowed it, she came to meet him, ready for the next prophetic word. And he says, now lock yourself and begin to pour and fill up everything. Then he says, go and sell. I like that. I have prophesied to you, but I do not ignore the transactional aspect. Now that you have it, still you will still need business sense go and sell it pay off your debt these are economic principles because the moment you begin to prosper the first thing you do is to pay your debt then it says leave up the rest so prophecy did not negate the economic advantage that they had this is the mistake that the prophetic has brought to the church so we make people to ignore their minds throw away their brains throw away their creativity and once you can just listen to a prophetic word magically your life will change and because god honors the prophetic it will work so someone comes to give a testimony you prophesied and ten thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars god opened doors for me and somebody even if a stranger but now they do not know what to do with it and one month later they go back to their yesterday and they remain there only to become slaves to prophecies the advantage of the prophetic hear me ladies and gentlemen is that the prophetic rests upon a mind that has been transformed rests upon a mind that is enlightened then you will see the potential
potential of the prophetic I'm about to speak over your life because many of you are business people many of you are leaders many of you have paid the price to value knowledge let the wise man not glory in his wisdom there is glory in wisdom let not the powerful or mighty man glory in his might there is glory in might and then let not the rich man glory in his riches there is glory in riches rise upon your feet please Rise upon your feet. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. I got to a point in my life where I made up my mind that I wanted God to help me by his mercy to a point where I can serve him with sincerity of heart and never get to a point where I compromise on the integrity and the purity of his word because of finances I'm going to tell you something that I want you to listen very carefully the Lord spoke to me one time to go and meet one of the fathers of faith in our nation and I got up and took that step of faith I carried a seed it was truly a seed um, no matter how blessed you are it will cost you something and I went there I remember when I went and I sowed the seed and then I was about to enter the car and leave the Lord told me he said place your hand on the ground there when I did he said from this day you have entered the overflow anointing please hear me if I do not tell you this my conscience will judge me one of the ways that you provoke the prophetic one of the ways that you provoke a sworn blessing is honor one of the ways you provoke the prophetic is obedience but the final way you provoke the prophetic is sacrifice when it was time for Isaac to bless his sons Isaac was already a wealthy man Isaac was a great man please listen to me and he said he called his son Esau he said my son go to the field make me venison such as my soul loves so that I will take it and then I will bless you because I'm about to die the venison he ended up eating was his own animal that was at the back of his house so he had it and he had a wife who could prepare it because what he ended up eating was lunch or dinner that Rebecca that um, uh, Rebecca prepared so why did he want Esau to go down and get the venison and come and make it himself not his wife had a wife that could cook had cattle but he said no not my own go don't even go to the back go to the forest bring the one that is a product of your productivity and your labor let me be excited and let my soul bless you and when Rebecca heard him he said all right Jacob come something is about to happen there is a transaction what came from Abraham to your father that made him so in a land of famine is about to leave him I've heard what he's told Esau quickly I will make for you venison and put everything together go and serve him ladies and gentlemen please hear me the life of this man you see I have entered realms and dimensions in the spirit by the power of sacrifice 
Psalm 50 verse 5, gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Again, I'm very, I feel very uncomfortable sharing what I'm sharing with you because of the many abuses in the body of Christ. But remember, the person who is talking to you is a man who loves you sincerely and a man who fears God. I fear God with all my heart. God has shown me mercy. It's not at this point in ministry that I'll come and manipulate people. No. There is nothing I'm looking for that God has not given me. God has shown me mercy. God has carried many, many lifetimes of people and he has brought today with all humility and by grace. But hear me. There is a realm where you do business with God in the spirit and the commodity for exchange is blood. Blood there represents sacrifice. Something that will cost you. There are moments in my life where I took certain things. Last year, I think it was, God gave it an instruction that had not come for many years in my life. I'm a giver. God has helped me. I love giving even if there were no rewards. But last year, God gave me an instruction to sow a very huge amount, you know, on behalf of the ministry. And then when he told me that, I said, fine, the ministry will give this. And then the next instruction came. I don't think there's anything I cannot give God in my life. And I say this with every sense of humility. But ah, that one, I know that one shook me small. I'm telling you, between me and God. God now said, what I ask that the ministry would give, I want you as a person, give twice of it. After telling God yes to your will, I don't know if I would have said yes, if he allowed me to now say yes, that the ministry will give. Then he said, you, this amount, I don't want to tell you, because some of you will not sleep if you hear it. Believe me. You cannot lie and say it was not God. He will repeat it again if you want to hear him. And I said, oh Lord, it is your grace. There is nothing I have that does not belong to you. And if you have called for it, you do not need it. It is because you are ready to take me to another level. Listen, by the time I dragged that sacrifice like Abraham dragging Isaac, gave the one for the ministry and then I laid down my own ah something happened to me that had not happened in a long time I stepped into a level of grace a level of influence a level of power a level of help from the Lord in a way that I'm not sure I would have gotten there any other way I'm not very good at sharing my testimonies unfortunately it's a weakness that I have pray for me it's because I always want people to see Jesus and that their focus should not be me but ladies and gentlemen I am one person who has seen the goodness of the Lord all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good but every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness on account of the instruction God gave me God did something in my life that till forever I will never recover from I'm saying this because I want to pray for you but when I teach on finances I never speak upon people without them having a seed in their hand and this that I'm telling you even me I'm going to bring out a seed it's a principle if you don't believe what I'm saying that's fine you just listen and say amen to whatever I say but hear me if you are truly at a defining point in your destiny and there are certain things you need to end in ministry i'm sorry i did not even discuss this with his eminence my sincere apologies for 
perhaps breaking any protocol but here don't drop a seed yet hold on hold on it's not about money it's not about money please listen it's not about money most believers think it, you can drop something in a basket and that is donation not sacrifice listen what makes it sacrifice is not the seed it is the understanding that supports what you are doing so please listen i have stepped into defining seasons in my life the first time i would experience the lifting power the prophetic order of wealth and prosperity happened when i gave two women i went to buy sugar cane years ago and then i saw two old women they were also trying to buy the sugar cane and i said please i'm a young man you are mothers would you give me the honor of paying for you they said no 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 i said please i insisted and so i paid it was not more than i don't know what that would translate in nigerian naira would say 100 naira and so that's that's not really anything serious just a meager amount hallelujah and then when i dropped it they gave them the sugar cane and the women began to bless me and for some reason i didn't pay attention to what they were saying i truly believe today that they were not humans one of the women looked at me and said my son forever walk upon gold how does a person who is looking frail and weak look at a young man and say walk upon gold there are mysterious people on this earth oh. and when god wants to lift you he will help you to collide with one of them hallelujah praise the name of the lord and i can tell you story upon stories people who have prayed from their heart and release certain things to program a cloud of favor and I want to do the same today I want to do the same right now to a businessman to a pastor to an apostle to a prophet to an evangelist who really intends to serve Jesus to a young man seeking establishment a young man who desires to do ministry with integrity perhaps an aged person who is saying will i die like this without seeing the glory of god i want to challenge you by the spirit of god whether now or whenever i want to challenge you to hold a seed in your hand i want to use this as a prophetic contact and pray for you if you do not believe what i'm saying please don't be under pressure don't worry you will not go to hell but i want to challenge you you would for the rest of your life you will live to testify over what I'm about to do in your life. If you need envelopes, do we have the ushers? Let me challenge you. Stand with something. Take a minute while you are doing that to begin to talk to the Lord. Father, my life must change. My life. For someone who may be following online, You are seeing a preacher who is speaking to you by the Spirit of God. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the mighty or powerful man not glory in his might. Let the rich man not glory in his riches. There is glory in wisdom. There is glory in power. There is glory in riches. God wants to help us. I see that the accounts that are displayed I want to pray for you you honestly don't have a seed to sow why don't you hold the hands of someone who is sowing and say Lord you see my heart sincerely I may not have a seed but let me still connect to this prophecy you will never be the same you've touched his grace your life is changed you will never be the same hold on let me pray you've touched his grace your life is changed hallelujah as i'm speaking to you now i already know what the lord has put in my heart to sow to because the lord does not change when you become blessed i would be i would be a hypocrite 
if I stand here as a preacher and I say to so and then I don't do it myself no do you believe in what we are doing take a minute and begin to cry to the Lord the dimensions you desire to step in especially in the area of your business or finances go ahead please go ahead and pray pray holding your seed in your hand it is an ordinance it is a principle sacrifice the money you are holding is a representation of your value your desire your productivity take a minute and pray someone pray someone who is in debt right now who needs to come out of it a man of God who is trusting God for help trusting God for partnership when you sacrifice before the Lord money is not the only thing that returns to you God is able to give your seed another body please pray we're wrapping up in the name of Jesus Christ now this is what I want you to do whether you are kneeling or standing any position that is comfortable I want to make prophetic declarations over you please listen to me God sent me here and I want you to believe it as I speak over your life the prophetic is revelatory but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension it doesn't just reveal it makes happen what has no business happening by this time he said tomorrow he was not revealing what would have happened it was that prophetic word that made that event happen some of you by reason of this prophetic word even before the evening session you will return back with strange manifestations how does God bless men through the ministry of men simple there is no mystery around it it is men God will use to bless you good measure he says press down shaken together running over shall men give it always comes from God but it comes through men to men there is no haziness there's no confusion as why how God lives listen to me the money you are looking for today is in somebody's account right now it's not in heaven the opportunity the property the access whatever it is you are looking for there are current possessors of it right now on earth the assignment is that the favor of God will compel events and compel people to gravitate that which is your portion and bring it to you are you ready to receive please rise up with faith when I speak over your life I'm going to plead that his eminence will come and make prophetic declarations from the depth of his spirit as a man of God and as a father oaks and over this land it's an ordinance that God honors father in the name of Jesus Christ I stand as one sent by you by the privilege of this conference I have come to speak over your people I have taught them truth as revealed in scripture my God and my King I pray right now upon everyone who is under the sound of my voice I decree and declare everything that looks like a negative cloud over your finances over your business over your ministry by reason of this sacrifice I command it to give way now I command it to give way now I call on heaven to be a witness to what you are doing honor to God and honor to this grace therefore I decree and declare I call upon Ebenezer the one who helps men the one who helped Uzziah until he was marvelously helped I call upon Ebenezer may he begin to help you from today may my God begin to help you from today 
may the God of my covenant begin to help you from today man of God by reason of this sacrifice may God give you strange visibility in ministry strange visibility in business strange visibility in career every door that has been closed towards your business I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic I speak to that door a father be open a father be open a father be open hear me anyone here in debt you are owing and bills are on your neck it doesn't matter how you got there i call upon the god of all grace i taught you about the nature of god yesterday in the name that is above all names may god lift you in a way that surprises you do you believe what you are receiving now look up please listen the anointing that makes for wealth and abundance comes upon three dimensions of your life please listen the first area where the anointing to prosper rests upon is your head representing your mind please listen when the anointing to prosper comes it rests upon your mind it is responsible for creativity intelligence are we together now because your mind is one of the tools that programs wealth and abundance in your life so the anointing of the spirit Eli who said there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty make it men of understanding when the anointing to prosper comes this is how it works I'm teaching you it rests upon your mind giving you supernatural illumination that you now begin to see things that others do not see number two it rests upon your hands your hand is your weapon of productivity the bible says god will bless the works not of your feet the works not of your mind the works of your hands when your mind is blessed and your hands are not blessed you will have creative ideas witty inventions help those under the anointing and yet the power to execute will not be there so the anointing to prosper rests upon your hand empowering you to be circumspect extraordinary productivity services bringing value with excellence the bible says oh lord our god how excellent is your name it is the assignment of your hand to make your brand or your name excellent number three the third area where the anointing to prosper rests upon is upon your feet bringing you direction and guidance you can be productive to a wrong audience productive to a wrong place there are many people right now your problem is location wrong place wrong people are we together yes thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it and you will find rest for your soul there are people by reason of what you are receiving you will receive guidance direction you are in Ghana and God will tell you that business in America that is the one that prospers you that opportunity listen if you guess your way through the journey of wealth you will be a product of scammers you will be a product of fraudsters you will make unwise mistakes that will punish you in succession until you give up it says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he restores my soul he guides me he leads me he guides me he leads me he guides me he leads me when god leads men they do not fail so as i'm praying for you now so you don't just shout amen you know what you are receiving upon your head upon your hands upon your feet one more time upon your head upon your hands upon your feet now i pray for you in the name of jesus the power that prospers men that rests upon your mind bringing ideas creativity 
witty inventions receive it now in the name of Jesus number two these hands that are lifted up I place an unction upon them that the way they are lifted up now they will never go down again in the name of Jesus Christ may my God bless the works of your hands bless your business bless your ministry bless your children bless your job in the name of Jesus Christ number three help those under the anointing for those who are confused right now not knowing where to go Lord what business should I do in Ghana where should I put my money I'm praying for you all of the forces of revelation scripture the witness of the spirit dreams visions prophetic confirmations by your godly means may God direct you to the place of your destiny by your godly means may my God direct you to strategic relationships direct you to strategic relationships Lord may you find Abraham in this season in the name of Jesus Christ and hear me finally every one of you who is coming from a family where people do not prosper is a spirit is a cause that people get educated whether in America whether in Europe they come back and and look like the spirit of that territory I pray for you I call upon the God of my covenant the one who detaches men out of every tribe and tongue and nation in the name of Jesus every curse upon your life leading to poverty leading to failure leading to a life of mediocrity let it be lifted now in the name of Jesus and as you receive as you receive the prophetic blessing from his eminence and drop this seed I'm praying for you may it never be that you just dropped a seed only to be disappointed I give your seed a voice in the spirit I command it to go around Ghana gather its kind and return to you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ